Hello everyone and welcome to the online worship service of Epworth United Methodist Church and Crosswood United Methodist Church here in Marion, Ohio. I'm Reverend Jennifer Bass and it's wonderful to be in worship with you all today. Today is Rally Day Sunday. It's the day that we celebrate the kickoff of fall programming and all of the, uh, the renewal of um, our adult education classes and uh, children's and youth education classes, as well as our small groups and the reinvigoration of our missions and ministries uh, here in the church building and out in the community as well. And so uh, we are also celebrating today with uh, a huge uh, picnic in the church parking lot, a weather permitting after church. Uh, so so we are thrilled to celebrate Rally Day Sunday today, and we are so glad to be in worship with you all this morning. I invite you to uh, take a moment to pause your video and light a candle just as a symbol that God is with us as we worship across the miles. And today we go right into an opening hymn together, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Let's worship. Would you please join with me in our responsive reading this morning? Teach us your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Unite our hearts to revere your name. We give thanks to you with our whole heart, and we will glorify your name together forever. Help us to meditate and reflect on your instruction, O God, and to teach our children and our children's children to learn from your word and give praise to your name. Help us to learn through words and actions what it means to follow your son and embrace the grace you bestowed on us through him. Amen. Our New Testament lesson today is 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all of the runners run, but only one gets the prize? run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is the word of God for all of God's children. Thanks be to God. Would you join with me in prayer? Jesus, our great redeemer, we remember now your triumph over sin and shame over death and hell. 
we ask for the grace to grow in the knowledge and love of Christ and to spread the good news of your saving grace throughout all the earth, that in you there is life and peace, that you have broken the power of sin and set the prisoners free, that you heal the brokenhearted and breathe new life into the dead. God, we thank you for your generous goodness towards us. God, we know that in and of ourselves, we are incapable of loving you as we wish to, of being faithful to you as, you, as we desire, <clears throat> of serving you as you've called us to. We also know that you love to pour out grace upon grace to live in and through your disciples. And so we come and we offer ourselves anew. We ask you for the courage to stand in your strength. Carry us on the merit of your righteousness as you vanquish all evil and grant a crown of life to all those who are surrendered to you. Help us to run and not grow weary, to walk and not be faint, as we follow where you lead and run the race set before us by your great grace at work within us. We pray these things in your precious name, Jesus, as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Eric Liddell was called the Flying Scotsman. He was an Olympic runner in the 1920s. Amazingly fast, he ran with his head thrown back, his mouth open wide, and his arms pumping and flailing. Every single muscle was involved in the race, straining to reach the finish line. He ran with everything he had. Part of Eric Liddell's incredible story was captured in the 1981 Academy Award-winning movie, Chariots of Fire. Some of you might remember that movie and its famous theme song by Greek composer Vangelis. In fact, our church organist actually played a beautiful piano piece by Vangelis for our offertory just a couple weeks ago. Because of his Christian faith, Eric Liddell refused to run any races that occurred on Sundays. He believed that Sundays belonged to the Lord. Sundays were the Sabbath day, and so he would rest according to God's instructions in the scripture. In the 1924 Olympic Games in Paris, the heats for the 100-meter race were to take place on a Sunday morning. Even though that was Eric's favored event, he decided, because of his Christian values, not to run the qualifying races. As a result, there was no way for him to qualify for his very best event, the 100-meter race, and because of his religious convictions about honoring the Sabbath and keeping it holy, Eric willingly gave up the opportunity to earn what would have surely been an Olympic gold medal. Many believed that his chances at an Olympic medal were over. A few days later, though, he ran in the heats for the 200-meter and the 400-meter events, and he qualified for the finals for both. He ended up taking bronze in the 200-meter race, and surprisingly, he took gold in the 400-meter race, actually setting a blazing world record speed in the 400 meters. A year later, in 1925, at the peak of his athletic career, Eric Liddell joined the London Missionary Society, and he went to serve God as a Christian missionary to northern China. There is a line from the movie Chariots of Fire that, that Eric Liddell supposedly said in real life, and it has always stuck with me. A few well-meaning Christian friends really uh, judged Eric for struggling with the choice between running versus the mission field. The choice between running and athletics and, and striving toward the Olympics versus entering the mission field. In one scene, Eric had this crucial conversation. He said to his friend, I'm going to China, 
I'm going to the mission field, but first I have a lot of running to do. He could see that his friend was disappointed with his decision, so, so he tried to explain. Look, he said, I believe that God made me for a purpose, for China, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. To give that up would be to hold God in contempt. Running is not just for fun. To win is to honor him. That line from Eric Liddell has always echoed in my head and in my heart somehow, year after year. God made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. I just love that. And I love it not because God made me fast. I'm much more of a walker than a runner, so God didn't make me fast. God made Eric Liddell fast. But I'll tell you what, God did make me a lot of things. And when I live into and do and be all of the things that God did make me, I can feel God's pleasure. I can feel God's happiness when I am living into the person God made me to be. And I sure do hope that you can say the same for you and that you have discovered along the way several of the gifts and graces God has given to you. In fact, I hope in 2023, in the year to come, that we can offer a study or two that can allow people to explore some of their spiritual gifts and some of the ways that God has hardwired them. I know that Crosswood is currently offering an in-person study on Thursdays at lunchtime starting in mid-September that allows people to explore their God-given personality types and temperaments. And if you are interested in checking it out, Crosswood has made that invitation open if you are local and you can check that out by calling their church office. So what does all of that have to do with where we are today? Well, for the past nine weeks, we have studied the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We've taken an in-depth look at the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control that is available to us by the power, presence, and provision of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, the part of God that is resident within us moment by moment, breath by breath. Each week, you and I were reminded that by the Holy Spirit, help is on the way. Help is already here. God is with us right this moment, helping us grow the character traits of Christ in our lives, in every season and situation. We are truly never alone. Jesus is with us always to the very end of the age, just like he promised, by the Holy Spirit growing and maturing these Christ-like characteristics in us and, and in our church. Many of you will probably remember that even before that, in the weeks between Easter and the start of July, we covered the topic of hospitality extensively. If we want our church to grow, if we want to successfully expand the kingdom of God all around us, if we want children and youth and young adults and, and families and neighbors and visitors and guests and friends of all ages and backgrounds to come to our church and experience Christ at our church and have life-changing encounters with God in and through our church and get plugged in at our church and feel welcome at our church and find a place to serve others in Jesus' name at our church or through our church, we must practice extravagant hospitality. We cannot be exclusive. We cannot be the frozen chosen, if you've, ever, if you've ever heard that saying. We cannot have people coming in the doors and no one greeting them, no one speaking to them before and after church to catch their name and say hello. No one bothering to say, it's so good to see you today. How are you this week? We cannot get into the trap where we're only ever inside the doors of this building in the first place. If we want to be effective Christians for the cause of Christ, 
We must exercise the same hospitality. We see all throughout the scriptures, the the hard kind of hospitality, the kind that says, even if we're enemies, I'm going to love and care for you. If we want to be an effective and powerful church, then hospitality has to be our number one calling card. It needs to be our reputation within our community, and we need to fling wide the doors. If you missed any one of those weeks, any one of those sermon messages, links to all of those online services are available on our church website, which will take you to our YouTube channel. You can watch sermon after sermon right there. Everything is archived on our YouTube channel. Now today, today is Rally Day Sunday. Today we launch into our programming year to match the rhythm of a new school year. We launch into a new year of events and activities and service and mission and outreach for the cause of Jesus Christ. We launch into a a renewed effort of joining God in God's mission here in our city and across the world that will change people's lives for eternity. And listen, it's an old thing. It's a continuation of the work and the mission and ministry that has been a legacy here at this church and at Crosswood and in this community for generations upon generations. And it's work that will continue uh, long after us in the generations to come. But listen, today it is also a new thing. Today is rally day and in every season we always rally to new work that God has for us. So much of the work and ministry and mission of this season to come for us is brand new and I just want us to think about that for a moment. Our preaching text for this week is nearly the same as last week, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. And last week we listened and learned from this passage in the context of the Holy Spirit fruit of self-control as we were, la- we were wrapping up last week's sermon series. But this week we are starting something new. We are starting a new sermon series based on the United Methodist membership vows. In the United Methodist Church, when we join the church, we, we pledge and promise to support God's mission, God's life-saving mission in the world to, to work through the church by our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And so today I want us to listen to this passage, this scripture passage again with fresh ears because the Apostle Paul reminds us Christians of an important truth We are running a race, and we're not just running for fun. We are running to win. So the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get that prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I don't run like someone running aimlessly. I don't fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. In other words, in the first century, it would have sounded a little something like this. All the runners on the racetrack are running to win, but only one gets first place. So each one of you must run to be victorious. A true Olympic athlete will be disciplined in every way, practicing constant self-control in order to win that laurel wreath crown of victory. But listen, a laurel wreath crown quickly withers. You and I, on the other hand, we run our race to win a victor's crown from the Lord that will exist for time everlasting. So when I'm running that race, I don't just run for exercise. I don't just box like somebody throwing aimless punches. Instead, I train like a champion athlete. I get my body under control so that after preaching all of this good news to others, I myself 
don't get knocked out of the race. The Apostle Paul was declaring, I am in it to win it. In Philippians chapter 3, he put it like this. He used some really powerful words. He said, I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to know the power of Christ's resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, even becoming like Christ in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take a hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He said, I am in it to win it. I am running for the prize. I think the Apostle Paul would have loved Eric Liddell, who said, God made me fast, and when I run, I can feel God's pleasure. When I think of where the church is poised, coming out of the COVID pandemic, or perhaps it's more accurate to say, learning to live with the reality of COVID in our midst, for some years to come and just moving into this new normal together. The picture I get in my mind's eye of this new reality for the church is of racehorses pawing at the gate, chomping at the bit and ready to run the race. I think, I think most of us would agree that our lives have been touched and changed forever by coronavirus in major ways over the past couple years. Our lives and the church. Would you say that your life and your household has been touched by health strain, economic strain, political strain, financial strain, and a tremendous amount of stress and grief these past two and a half years? Would you perhaps say the same of the church? Perhaps in your home you faced job loss or the loss of a loved one or a friend to the virus or maybe even several. Perhaps COVID caused a tremendous amount of change and grief in your life. The Epworth congregation lost a couple dear people to COVID. And COVID caused a tremendous amount of change and shift around here in two and a half years. It really changed the face of many of our ministries. And so now we look forward to a future of new and different ministries and missions and outreach that we never before had envisioned for our church and for this community that we love and that we serve, and strengthening some ministries that have lost some momentum in the past year or two. In some substantial ways, COVID changed our trajectory, but it never changed the fact that God has crucial work for us as a church, a crucial mission for us, an eternal plan and purpose for us in this location where we are planted and across the face of the earth, especially by our United Methodist connection with all of our other brother and sister congregations. God is not done with us. We cannot slow down. We cannot give up. God made us the church. God made us to run. And when we run, we can feel God's pleasure. We are running for the prize. And there are souls at stake. 
our ministry has eternal significance. Nothing is more important than investing in people's lives and their relationship with Jesus Christ, especially when it comes to our work with the next generations, young adults, teenagers, and children, and especially when it comes to our work of justice making as we serve the poor and the marginalized just like Jesus did. Friends, you will not want to miss a single week of this five-week sermon series that is coming up. Run to win, supporting God's mission through the church by your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. If you are connected with Epworth United Methodist Church, you will be receiving a stewardship devotional and a 2023 commitment card along with an invitation from me to prayerfully consider partnering with God and partnering with Epworth United Methodist Church in all the important ministry God has ahead of us, especially in the year to come. Our ministry is urgently needed in our hurting community and around the world, and you can help. When we link arms and do church together by our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, it will be pleasing to God, and together with the Lord, we will make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen and amen. Pastor Kristen, as we embark on a new sermon series starting next Sunday that is based upon the United Methodist membership vows, and as we uh, consider this scriptural imagery of running a race for God's glory, and maybe, maybe even as we consider where the, the, the church, the capital C church, has come these past two plus years of COVID and where God is taking us and all that lies before us. What would you add today? Pastor Jen, thank you so much for another amazing message. I just, I found myself thinking as you were speaking, what is it that God has called me to? What has God called us as a family of faith to? And what does it really look like to, as you say, be in it to win it? Um, and I started thinking, you know, if someone stopped me on the street and said, what has God called you to? Would I have an answer? You know, if someone were to stop any parishioner in the churches and say, what is it that God has called you specifically to? What is your race to run? Would we have an answer? If someone were to stand outside in our parking lot after worship and say, what has God called this church to do? Would we have an answer? Would it be the same answer? Are we unified in the mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? And so I was thinking about that and I was thinking about what it actually looks like to run that race, what it looks like to press on, what it looks like to be in it to win it. And I just kept thinking about how it starts with that inward resolve of this is what God's calling me to and I'm going to be faithful. And then you start by praying for the grace and you set your heart, you fix your gaze, and then you just do it. You dismiss the distractions, you dismiss those disqualifiers, and you trust that God will provide where it is that God guides, that we'll find joy in the doing as we run, as we experience God's pleasure. So thank you so much for sharing this morning, Jen. That was, that was a blessing. Thanks, Kristen. And I know that as I was preparing uh, this sermon this week, one of the scriptures from Galatians that kept echoing in my mind was when the Apostle Paul uh, says to the church at, at uh, Galatia, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? And I, I thought to myself about how um, for many, many churches especially, it just really felt like COVID came out of nowhere and just um, so much momentum lost and, and, um, well, and, and, um, just so feeling, feeling like so many plans derailed so many, here's how we formerly did so much of our mission and ministry and, and things just got, things got so derailed and not just for, um, maybe necessarily either church here, uh, of ours here in Marion, um, but, you know, all over, all over the world. And so I think, I think um, 
just this encouragement that there is still so much to do. And, and, and so how now, as we learn to live with this and as we, we work to regain momentum, how now can we continue to just fix our eyes on Christ and continue to discern what does God have for us in this, in this new reality? And truly, like you said, it is rally day. It is rally day. And how can we rally now to the call that we are still running? It is still a race. Um, The work of the church actually has not changed, even this whole time. Um, And maybe, maybe even now is a time to consider that there is a cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on from heaven. Go, go, go. Um, That's a beautiful thought. That's a beautiful thought. I'll end there. Thank you so much, everyone, for worshiping with us today. Uh, It is always a pleasure to to be in worship um, with you all. We are grateful that you tune in each and every week uh, to worship with Crosswood and Epworth. And um, we are blessed by your presence. We are going to close in worship today with the beautiful hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Let's close in song. As you go forth about your days, receive this benediction taken from Jude 1. Beloved, keep building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God, dependent on the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen.